a nerd. Nerds. 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 I'm not kissing a nerd. What is a nerd? Nerd. Holy crap, are we nerdy? Incredibles Pixar got some dates. Star Wars Battlefield Beta, New York Comic Con. Daniel Craig kills himself because he doesn't want to be James Bond. Kills himself. Kills himself. Killed himself. Oh, Welcome, okay. Nerdables, to episode 106. This week we are talking Marvel. You want to do it the way you were just doing it? Just going to do it as a podcast radio station. Welcome, everyone, Nerdables 106, 106.0, the Nerdables station. A cool 99 degrees out here in Thousand Oaks, California. Coming up, we're going to talk Marvel Phase 3, new dates for movies. Also staying in the Disney realm, the Pixar dates, including Incredibles 2, got announced. We're going to yell about Star Wars Battlefront Beta. We're talking about all the news from New York Comic Con. Comic news, I know we don't do it much, we're going to do it today. And Daniel Craig decides to kill himself rather than be Bond again. Joining us today, Ethan, Sebastian, Rich, and from the Nerd Satellite One, Travis Jones. Welcome back to the show, Trav. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, buddy. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, I was so glad that you decided to take a couple minutes out of your super busy day to join us for the first time in probably three years. I almost forgot You're what so you looked busy. like. Yeah, Thanks super Trav. busy trying to find ways not to be on the show. Really appreciate it, buddy. We know you're here. <laughs> Can't wait to hear your It's RoboTrav. <laughs> you got it, bud. It's my pleasure to be here to grace my presence with your presence so you could have my presence. There's a lot of oh, presents We love going presents on. going on. It's Christmas time. You know, it's coming up. Only two months. Does everybody know we're getting each other? That's right. We don't get anything for each other anymore because we all don't like each other. <laughs> we just tolerate it. I have a gift for you. It's up in my bum. <laughs> This that show you... just took a dark turn. <laughs> this is why you don't talk much, Ethan. Speaking of bums, we learned last night Rich uses anal dildos. I just want to put it out there. <laughs> That's not true. I've had some... His balls are itchy because he's been reaching from under him to get himself plugged up with a Super Butt Plug 3000. They're a sponsor, right? Available now. Super Butt Plug 3000. Get it at your local Target. I've had some nut issue going on, but nut, nothing you know, in my ass. Know. Wait, you have nut issues? Yeah, nuts in his ass. <laughs> yes, I have epididymitis or something. This is Some officially really the most creepy show that we've ever done. Uh, I, I don't I think have, anybody I needs to know. I have the inflammation of the balls is basically what it is. Uh, so, anyways, now that you're not listening, we're going to keep going on with the show. So, Sebastian is just simply playing with his watch now. He's like, what? he has no interest in actually. Sebastian is reevaluating show. if he wants to be. On oh, the there show. go the headphones. Sebastian is walking out the door. He's like, "What the fuck are we doing? This is not what I signed on for." I walked it's in, exactly and people started talking about balls. <laughs> what else did we talk about? Oh, we can talk about Marvel. Let's talk about Marvel Phase Three. Marvel Phase Three. So, there's been a lot of. Speculation talk, rumors going around the internet since uh, on Friday at New York Comic Con, or was it Thursday? Either day, whatever day. Uh, they had announced plans to change some of the movies for episode, or shit, episode, for phase three. And Captain Marvel got pushed back. Um, who wants to go through the whole day? Just let's go through the whole change. Over. Quick date. So next year, May 6, 2016, is Captain America Civil War, also known as Avengers 2.5. Uh, follow that year, November 4th, sees Doctor Strange. 2017, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 on May 5th. The Yay. untitled Spider-Man film that got shoved in there July 28th. And in the fall, uh, Thor Ragnarok, November 3rd. Moving to 2018, February 16th, sees Black Panther. And then the first of the Avengers Infinity War. So Avengers Infinity War Part 1 is May 4th of 2018. The newly announced title, Ant-Man and the Wasp, the sequel to Ant-Man, is July 6th of 2018. No fall movie in 2018, going all the way to 2019, where Captain Marvel got moved back to March 8th. The Avengers Infinity War Part 2 is in May of 2019, and Inhumans is July 12th of 2019. So those are all of the dates that they've put on there for that's all the their phase three. Yeah, sure. that's their new one. Because they added three untitled uh, movies for 2020. That's what I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything about that. They at haven't all. released it. They just said we have three movies for new 2020. And I'm sure they're probably going to be phase four movies since they're after Infinity War. Yeah. They're probably holding those spots as sequels for, for other whatever. If Captain Marvel, pa Black Doc Panther, Strange. and Doc Strange do well, then that's where the sequels will go. If they don't do super well, 
then maybe they do, you know, Cap 16 and Guardians 45. Iron Man 45 and Guardians Disco Ball Edition. And... <laughs> um, well, they were saying Captain Marvel is going to lead right into Avengers, which will be nice. Right. So it's only two months apart. So you're going to have the lead in for Avengers be right there before it. You don't have to wait. Well, Captain Marvel's after Avengers. No, I thought you said it was March. Mm-hmm. Avengers Part 1 is 2018. Captain Marvel is March of 2019. Oh, that's Captain right. Captain Marvel's the first movie before Avengers 2. I right. don't think any of those films are going to connect to Avengers. I don't see how they can if you're going to have... Well, they if can if you, decide, if, if you don't do a cliffhanger. If you do something where you have the end of Part 1 be, we'll see you in a couple... You know, the, the world's changed and find out how the world changes in Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is probably going to be a flashback. Um, and huh. Captain Marvel... Well, no, probably won't, but eventually Lily will be there. Um... If you're going to change the world drastically in part one, then those two films don't aren't going to work. Well, then they'll, they'll just be two. like I, yeah, whatever whatever's going on in the new universe will be. They'll be. I think you'll by see it. both of those. Well, I think you'll see both of those films, Ant Man and Captain Marvel, with a disclaimer right at the front was that this is set before the events of Avengers: Infinity War Part One. That's interesting. That, well, that, I guess you could do that, or they'd be going simultaneously, or. They're, yeah, I mean, it'd have to be where they're not affected by it. Since it's said that the Captain Marvel movie is a very Earth-bound film, thank God. Um, Do you all want to see Captain Marvel in space? No, I want to see Captain Marvel in space. That, that's yeah, sarcasm. Why don't they sarcasm. tie it into Guardians? No, that's sarcasm. <laughs> oh. I don't want it being Earth-bound. I think she gets boring that's when she's the, That's the same mistake that Green Lantern made. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it all on Earth. No. Why? It's, it's save Earth for later. Well, Don't since they've already now. introduced the Kree into the universe, you could, she could just be battling the Kree. It doesn't have to be just battling the Kree. In fact, I don't think they're going to make a big deal of her Kree heritage at all. You don't think so? No, I no. think they're just going to present her as a superpower the TV show. Game. They're doing the Kree on the TV show, and that's something that you can't expect people who go to movies to know what the TV show is and vice versa. But see, here's the thing. and I, I, I was Well, you pre- can't expect people to know the TV show because no one's watching. Kevin Feige did come out and say, and I think we kind of touched over this last week a little bit, that he's that they're planning on having not only the movies affect the TV shows like they have, where you've seen you know things that have happened in the universe affected the Daredevil world, right? But they or, also didn't say what affected the Daredevil world. They didn't. They, the, the, there, yes, there will be things that affect uh, both the shows and the movies. But the fact of the matter is, is they they're probably going to do like they did in Daredevil, where it's just like we're rebuilding Hell's Kitchen, and that's right. all you need to know. They never said aliens. That's well, no, the, they did. They did. They said from the Battle of New York. Yeah, but yes, the, but that, that, that they never what, said. What's special aliens. about it is what kind of level of affection? Is right. It? There's there's two different levels. There's Daredevil is not affected by the movies. Daredevil is set in the same universe as the movies. There's a very the, the basic plot point of how Wilson Fisk comes to power helps because of the Battle of New York. The difference on that is S.H.I.E.L.D. that -hmm. completely had to change its show because it's directly influenced by a movie, by a plot line in a movie. If Kevin Feige is talking about the level of influence that the Netflix show already has, which Mm -hmm. is basically someone's going to mention that the Avengers exist, that's fine. Look at something like Ant-Man. Ant-Man, except for that kind of shoehorned-in scene Mm -hmm. with Falcon, the only mention of it, of anything in the Marvel Universe, is when... Paul Rudd's character, when, when Scott Lang says, we should call the Avengers, and Hank says, no. Right. I'm not giving it to Tony Stark. I don't I mean, trust that's those it. Yeah. And that's the t- if that's the level of involvement, that's not really a big deal. If the level of involvement is going to be, you know, Thor loses his hammer in Ragnarok, and then all of a sudden Power Man finds it in Netflix season three, that's a huge difference. And sure. if they do that, they're stupid. Because yeah. you're never going to match the Okay, schedule. so what do you think about Feige saying that he... Or they plan if they can, you know, work it out because obviously scheduling is the one of the biggest influences to whether or not they can cross over between the shows and the movies and money. Well, no, he they, the way he made it sound was money aside. It's I'm not gonna contracts I'm not gonna, and everything. It I'm was not just, gonna overanalyze what he said. And the right. fact of the matter is, is it's money is the big thing. That's gonna be number one because you're not gonna pay Paul Rudd TV actor salary to guest star on one episode of the show for five minutes and two things can be affected exactly D- daredevil was affected by avengers one but they never said avengers one they never said alien invasion they just said battle of new york mm-hmm. that's it and that's fine because and then you see that you know, ben has uh, the article that right. he wrote up on. yeah well you have you basically you have a jumping off point in that the way that wilson fisk 
really started to turn around or, or started his his conglomerate was because he was in construction. Yes, right. And if you wanted to be in construction, New York's the place to be after the first Avengers. Mm-hmm. Right. But you didn't need to watch Avengers to watch Daredevil, and you didn't need to watch Daredevil uh, to understand what happened. No, and previously. I get that. And that's I'm sure that's the changes that will be there. They're not gonna. You're not gonna see. I mean, apart from the defenders ending up in Avengers Infinity War Part Two, which they already said. They've been signed for. You're not going to see, you know, Evangeline but do you think Lily you're going to see showing those... up in an episode of, of Agents of Shield for a story arc? Would they? I mean, they already did it with you know, with uh, uh, Jamie, Alexander. Jamie Alexander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can and... do that. I think, it, but you haven't seen anything like that since, right? You have right now. Um, last week's episode having to do with Asgardian stuff, and they mm-hmm. went back to the whatever that little dude is. Um, which is fine because it's it's just showing that there's more going on in the world. Right. Because you don't need to but, do but, it. Yeah, but it also yeah, it's, if it's ever going to be anything like that, it's going to be a minor character. I could see one of you know Ant Man's thieves showing up. Or whatever, yeah. Right. You know, Michael Pena's character. Well, I don't necessarily. I mean, that's mean, that's my fear. Is there going to be something like, oh, all the, everybody loves the Michael Pena character in Ant Man. Let's use him in. Shield. He's going to be the new call. Let's use him in this. Let's use him, and then it's just like, hey, you know. Right. But it, that's that's the thing is that you're not going to. They would be foolish and. And the chances of them doing it, they won't do anything that will require you to watch an episode of the show. T- because that's the thing. No one, you can't force people to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. No. You can't get them to watch it willingly. And to have an entire <laughs> episode that is required to watch before you see something like Captain Marvel is just shooting yourself in the foot. Because then you have movie audiences who will go see Captain Marvel and go, what are they talking about? No. What the, it's yeah. like, well, they and did they, it with Avengers with Avengers Two no, with, with Shield. Yes, no, they did. They, no, no, they, they, didn't. they didn't. Well, no, no, wait. Listen, let me finish. Let me finish my thought. They did it where the effects of what Coulson had found in Shield sent the Avengers to where they were at the beginning of the movie. But you didn't need to watch Shield in order to know what's going That's on. That's exactly what I've been saying, though. Is that but it you did can't... enhance if you if you wanted to have that more you know that that. That full, yes, that's the, the perfect full story. Word for it. It's it enhances your viewing experience. Yes. Well, but it's not required. because the other way around. We had this argument at the time, and it was basically that that whole storyline, that secret Coulson's working on a secret storyline, which you presented in the show for something like six to eight weeks, mm-hmm. was not right. paid off in the show. It was paid off in the movie. That's the kind of thing that Sebastian's talking about. Right. Well, that's that because they, they had to go. What they didn't want to give away the helicarrier on the show, so they okay, waited until the week after the right, movie right. came out but to show you that you flashback. You spent weeks and weeks and weeks in your television TV series, in your talking little universe, his, yes. talking about something that was a major plot point that was paid off in, a movie. in the last third of the movie. Yes, yeah. that you never got in your show. And... and they didn't say at the end of the show, by the way, if you want to know what the hell we've been talking about for the last 10 weeks, go see Avengers 2. Come back next week for a brand new story. That's, think... that's, the, that's the problem. If they're going to continue to do that, forget it. Do you that's think stupid. that it was okay, the way that they did it, where when they, end, they should have ended the season with Coulson telling Maria Hill, hey, we found, you know, they're in Sokovia, Send the no. it's time to send them in. Okay, that's how they, they should no, no. have ended it to no, no, me. No. Here's how, how they should have done it. Don't talk about the fucking movie. Make Agents of Shield, Agents of Shield. Stop making it a movie. It has nothing to do with the films. No, it doesn't. But it, I, I okay. like the enhancement of it. You like the enhancement of it? Fantastic. You know who doesn't? Anybody who watches that fucking show <laughs> and then doesn't go see a Marvel movie because and they even don't then, care. even if they go see it, I don't want to go see a Marvel movie and go. By the way, check out what happened in Agents of right. Shield for the last ten weeks. If I'm going to go to the movies, I'll go to the movies. Okay, if I'm going to watch about a TV the, series, I'm watch the TV series. Of it. What about the reverse of it, which is, I think is kind of what you know, Feige is talking about, where more like the, the, what happened with Daredevil. It's a background. That you part's know, fine. That's so fine. if that happens saying, in the movies, though, there's why? something. There's some, cause no one's watching what the he, What they're saying is they want to cross, you know, t- whatever effects in one universe, yes, meaning the movie or the piece, television. If there's something, that's fine. But if you're going to continue to do this where you're trying to get so self-referential by having all of your jokes and all of your end things be like, well, if you watch Daredevil, you'll get this. If you watch Jessica Jones, you'll get this. If you get Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you'll get this. You're starting to force push things into a story that you should just be creating a story. But if right. you're going to That's include... the problem with all of these. This is, this, is the, this is the Ant-Man conundrum if, in fact, the rumors are true that one of the reasons Edgar Wright left was because they went to him and said, we need to write this as if it's more of a Marvel film that fits in with other Marvel films. Right. That's a problem. 
because well, you're not letting them write the film that is the film. Let them write the film first, and then and even, get the film yeah. in there. And if that, but if, if that, gonna, if, if it's organically, the, if it's organically put in there as, hey, if we make a reference to Matt Murdock's law practice, then it's there. But even then, why? What's what's the point? Inclusion. Yeah. Why? But it, it detracts from your story because even in in the end, the we all know they're a part of the same same, same universe. universe. It, it's we do, but not the mainstream movie. That's goers. okay. If so if the mainstream know. movies doesn't know, what does it matter? Why do they have to know? If it doesn't, if it doesn't directly affect anything, do they have to know that Avengers and Cap are in the same universe? Yes, because those movies are very tied together as films. Cap okay. is obviously a character in both movies. If we're not going to see any of these characters, be any any part of these shows or any part of these movies, or the other way around. But if the Defenders care? are going to be in one of the, uh, the Avengers movies... Do you really think the Defenders are going to be in it for more than 40 seconds? That's exactly what I was talking about last week. Is that and again, I, if you're going to write the Defenders in it as major characters, you're going to take characters from a TV series, yeah. you're going to put them in an Avengers film and right. make them a major part of it? Right. Yeah, it's, you're, you're wasting your time. Okay, but there because is still the, the that's fact... What, for me, I, uh, when they said Defenders would be in Infinity War Part Two. Immediate, it's like, it's like it's probably going to be cuts to different parts of the city and those characters well, that's what fighting, we were saying with and them. that's it, and that's it because a movie going audience who doesn't know who Daredevil, or Luke Cage, or Jessica Jones, or Iron Fist are doesn't matter. They're just extra superheroes in their movie. But for the person who watches a Netflix show, it's like, oh, cool, it's the Defenders, and that's fine. Because... Oh, cool, Luke Cage just got killed by yeah <laughs> Thanos. It... Well, I mean. No, I can see. Would it be acceptable then for like Maria Hill sitting there and she's got a bunch it's of not monitors? A, it's not, not in a sense. It's, it's not, not a sense of acceptability. It's is it going to be good? And so far, with a lot of the stuff, it's not good. It's right. just shoehorned in, right? Because yeah, it, like they they put little mentions, like when they do the little things, like when you're going through the collector's, you know, like vault and you're seeing all the little things. That's not shoehorning. That's giving you like a little glimpse and a little like Easter egg. Yeah, the Easter egg's like, different hey, than a plot point. Yeah, exactly. But when you're like, okay, we need to like just cram this thing in here so we can like show it to all the people because we need to do that. It it comes off as manufactured, fake, and forced. Yes, it's like a comic book crossover. If it's not if it's not organic, you can tell when it's fake. Sure, you can, you can also tell when barely get people to read every crossover. Yeah, it just doesn't work in anymore. Comic but the, then the other side of this is for the for the money and for the studio purposes to in, um, to announce something. You know, oh, you, you should check out the show. You know, the TV show. It's a way for them to say, "Hey, fans, go see the TV show. Yeah, we need more they, money. We need do to the make trailer." Sure this, yeah, if, if you're they, gonna every theater that shows Avengers: Infinity War Part One. Build a Netflix trailer and put it in front of it. I mean, let's face it. You could because look, if not really as many people that watch go and see Avengers. None of the, you're never going to get that number for a Netflix series. You're just not sure. You're not going to yeah. have a billion people across the world all of a sudden go. I care about Daredevil and I want to watch this. The movie business, mm-hmm. the TV business, the streaming business are all completely different, and they need to be successful within their own um, their Wheel own house. wheelhouses, their own media. Well, see, to try it. and sit. Look, it's a great idea. The little pieces were fun. It was great. We're almost a decade into this, or more than a decade. What, what did we ever figure? What is Iron 2000, Man? Two thousand five, nine. Nine. God, it can't be nine, can it? it? Yeah. I thought we figured it. Two thousand eight. Okay. Two thousand nine. So you wouldn't. Iron Man was two thousand eight. Okay. So we're almost a decade into this. Yes. The, the the kind of hey, this is fun. This is cute, sort of thing. I'm over it. Let's just get good stories out there. But you wouldn't think a great plot point for Civil War if. If Coulson showed up and oh, Tony God. Stark knew that he was alive and Captain, and he didn't tell Captain, but here's the thing: if you're not watching Shield, you don't know Coulson. You don't alive. know Coulson's alive. So what's the point? Would it? Va- but it could validate the the bringing him back. No, nothing validates bringing him back. <laughs> no, it's like what we've been saying this entire time. What it does is it makes it feel forced. It's going to turn people off from wanting to listen to these stories. But right. see, that the moment to me, for, that the moment you forced. try and yeah, yeah, but it is forced because well, you have to remember you are not the target audience. You are you are the niche audience that happens to they know watch they've got and you. buy everything. Right. Yeah, they know they've got you. <laughs> but you know, John, it's, it's comic book John, fans. They know they they, yeah, they know Marvel knows everything. they got you. Marvel doesn't write for for me. Sure, Marvel's like we know that this idiot's going to keep buying a bunch of Marvel comics. You're going to keep going Marvel to the movies no matter what. You're going to you're going to go. Yeah, right. You you're you're the small fish in the big pond. They need John. Smith, forty something with kids who sees one, you know, one or two movies a summer to go see their movie, mm-hmm. and then well, look go, at something, something like Ethan. Ethan yeah. would be someone who would be he would pick and choose Marvel films, right? 
I mean, have you seen all? Have you seen all of them in the theater though? Yeah. Do you remember? Okay. Iron Man Three is his favorite movie. I know, but whatever. <laughs> but someone, oh, let's, let's say two. someone like Ethan, First one. who doesn't oh, who first. doesn't go to every you know doesn't go to a bunch of films. He may be someone along the lines that goes, "I'm going to go see the big Avengers film, but I'm I don't care about Ant Man. Yeah. I don't care about I don't care about Black Panther. I'm going to go see Cap because all the Avengers are in it. All I care about is Thor, Cap, Iron Man, and Avengers. That's it. And I don't care about Guardians or Kim. That's the people that they're chasing to yes. try and go see everything. That's what inclusion's about and all but that that's stuff. Also the, but it also makes your. But even like if someone, it doesn't if it doesn't improve your product, then it's not worth. But it. But then they're also chasing those same fans to watch the television shows. That's what I'm talking no, about. But yeah, that's the thing. Then, well, someone they, like they're you. asking them. It's like, hey, maybe you should go check out Shield. They're not going. You need to watch Shield episodes 19 and 20, or else this movie will make absolutely no sense. Or make sure you saw Cap before you saw the last three episodes of Shield. Right. Which our friend Ryan didn't do and watched <laughs> Shield and went. What the hell just happened? And he got... I mean, th- this is what I was talking about with that. This is the argument that I've had for a year and a half now. Ryan didn't go see Cap 2 opening weekend. Right. He watched S.H.I.E.L.D. the next week, having no idea that he was supposed to see Cap 2 first. He watched S.H.I.E.L.D. ruined Cap 2 for him. That, yeah, uh, well, okay. Because the whole end of the film, he already knew it. He knew what was going to happen. And that would be the same thing of, of watching S.H.I.E.L.D. and then not seeing uh, you know, Avengers 2 yet. Right. Because all of a sudden you, you, you see that last episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. where the Helicarrier comes well, up. Well, I mean, how many times have they mentioned Sokovia and S.H.I.E.L.D. this yeah. season? 30? Oh, 40? Yeah. 45 times? Maybe 50? Well, they even mentioned that Pym Particles and things like they that. They mentioned this all, yeah. And it's, it's, that's where it's starting to get over. If every episode they're trying to remind you, hey, by the way, this happened in Avengers 2. Yeah. The Avengers brought this big island, this big, this big part of a country up, and then they dropped it back down on the planet. It was terrible. Yeah. It was bad. That's why we have to be shielded. We have to be stronger because look at what Inhumans can do because they could tear up a piece of the planet and they could bring it up into the sky and they could drop it like the Avengers did. Did you know the Avengers dropped a piece of the planet back on itself? That was so crazy. But oh, do you think so it's something like... That's why all these people, these Inhumans, they're so dangerous because of what the Avengers... It's like, enough! But do you think something like the Registration Act or something like that should be mentioned in the show? If that, if they, that is in see, fact... that's the thing. They'll probably mention it for one second of an episode, well, no, it's Shield. They'll probably do three. No, they'll, milk they'll, they'll milk it. They'll, they'll bury that. They'll, they'll do three episodes, and everyone's like, "It's like, oh, well, now I already know what Civil War is about." Thanks, yeah, guys. if they do the Registration Act, yes, that's obviously going to affect all of these Inhumans. Anyone who has a power set would now expect it to be registered mm-hmm. and trained. So, but that's something where the entire universe changes because of one thing. Yes, if you put the Registration Act, and then you go through Shield, and it's like it, it doesn't exist. Then yeah, you're you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. It's it's a very fine line, and it's one that they're so close to crossing, and I think already crossed in Shield. That Kevin Feige saying, "Well, we want to make sure that these are a little closer together from now on," is not a statement I'm a fan of, and who knows if it's true. Kevin right. Feige is not the end all of all of this. And remember, there's a lot of other people that work in this. Jeff Loeb may be sitting there saying, "I don't want to connect myself to the movies anymore. I want to be able to do our TV as TV." Right. If Kevin, if Kevin Feige turns to Jeff Loeb and says, "Hey, by the way," you got to do more stuff with movies. Jeff Loeb can now tell him, suck off. You're not a part of my division anymore. You're not my boss. Well, so yes, they did yes. break up the division. Exactly. Well, they, they, That's they, they, they break up the division, so they didn't really Kevin Feige... Break no, Kevin, up the divisions. They, they broke just, up the division. They separated moved, them. They, well, no, the, the, the movie division still has ultimate control over the, movies. the TV as well. No, they but don't. The t- no, they but, don't. but the movies. The world, wait, wait, wait. Pull over the TV. But the mo- but the TVs or the movies do not have to answer to what's his name in New York anymore. They only answer strictly to Disney. The TV still has to go through the the old channels, right? Which yeah, so included which included Feige and and everybody else in the movie the, division. The, the whole the, it's separated. Their bosses are completely different. They're, they people have two now. different bosses now. I'm not saying they're not working together. Their bosses are completely different. It's Bob Iger and and who's the uh, Perlmutter? No. Well, Iger's oh, yeah, it's yeah, Pearl, yeah, Iger's Perlmutter Daisy. and and Feige are the two. Yeah, Perlmutter is all the TV show division. He's the head of everything for the shows. Jeff Loeb's boss Jeff Loeb is is Perlmutter. Perlmutter. Right, I know that. Kevin Feige's boss is no longer Perlmutter. Yes. Right, that means so that Kevin, Kevin Feige is not in his boss. Yeah. If Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige, it's not Loeb and then Feige and then Perlmutter. It's Loeb, then Perlmutter. Feige's over here and answers to Bob Iver. Feige is in charge of Marvel Studios. The TV division is still a run fa- by, it's still run by Marvel Studios. Perlmutter, though. But yes, the TV division's run by, but he, per, Perlmutter used to be the, 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 the head of yeah. just everything Marvel Studios. Now it's 
Kevin, Kevin Feige is, is, the part head, of the, is the head of the movie, movie division. division. Perlman is the head of the is, is head of the TV division. Right. But they still have to answer to Iger, who is in charge right. of but it he's, all. But he's yeah. the head. But he's also I'm, in I'm charge not talking of Star Wars. About, but right. I'm not talking about Jeff Loeb as it. being a TV person. Kevin Feige is no longer Jeff Loeb's boss. No, right. I'm, So if Kevin Feige, as a movie division, goes to Jeff Loeb and says, you need to put this character from Thor in your TV series, Jeff ostensibly Loeb. Jeff Loeb can tell him to pound sand. I don't. I, I don't know if that's completely true. I, I think that. I think that Feige has still power, somewhat power over the TV division. I don't think he does at all. I don't think he it. should. Who care, why, why does he care about the TV division? He's running the movies. Yeah. He he's really. already said he doesn't. The, the movie and the TV division don't want to talk to each other. Stop talking to each other. Then go do your own films. Go do your films. Go do your TV series. Make them amazing as you've done already. Yes. You've had quality already. Why are you trying to screw this up? Okay, so moving on to another facet of Disney. We'll just, just go right to another one of their uh, little, uh, I guess it's not little. Pixar's not little. It's, it's probably bigger than Marvel at this point. Did Pixar own Disney for a little while? <laughs> um, Incredibles 2 gets its release date. And it's 8 billion years away. <laughs> well, not only Incredibles really 2, well everything right. got their release date. Right. It's, but it's also... June 19, it's, 2019. Animation takes a really long time mm-hmm. to do. And it's not like, you know, something like The Good Dinosaur where they announced it and then it was like, oh, November. You know, they had originally talked about it in, like, 2011, but it was sort of something that they didn't need to focus on. But well, I think Incredibles when it's, when it's a new started, product like that, yeah, like Good it's Dinosaur, it's sort new. of like, okay, you just, you're like, oh, cool, they're doing a new movie to put you in your head. And when it's, it's coming something out, that's yeah, coming out next month. When yes. it's something attached to something where you're yeah. like, oh, we're doing a sequel. Right. And they announce it right away that sticks in your head. It does. Exactly. And then, that, that's the big thing is that, you know, it's. People have to wait until well, 2019 The Good Dinosaur, they talked about a long time ago, and then they were like, well, no, it's not going to happen. And then they went, well, it might. It was first announced in 2000. I, Whoa. What is that? I think it's when it's trying to find something. That was weird. It was, uh, first, yeah, first announced in 2011. But, yeah, it's also one of those things, like, it's a new property. Nobody's going to pay attention too much to it until it's right around the corner. Incredibles is like, now people have to actually feel the weight. Yes. Of an animated movie that has just started being written, especially that it's they release they put the release dates for six films and pick and Incredibles two is the last one. So November twenty fifth this year, which everybody already knew was good, good dinosaur. Yep. June seventeenth of next year is Finding Dory, which is yep. the Finding mm-hmm. Museum. And they announced that like Cars two, three so. is June sixteenth two thousand seventeen. Mm-hmm. Uh, brand new property Coco, November twenty second two thousand seventeen. From the look of the poster, that almost looks like a Day of the Dead sort of thing. Yes, that's that's oh, a project yeah, yeah, they yeah. talked about. Toy Story 4, which I thought they weren't doing. No, they've been working on... In fact, uh, when I saw Inside Out, they did a little talk about Toy Story 4. They've also been working on that for about two years now. Four years. Yeah. Toy Story 4 is June 15, 2018. And Incredibles... What did you say it was? June 19, 2019. Uh, There's a two here. It's... (laughs) The picture that's here is actually... Here we go. The picture... It's definitely when it tries to... Hold on. Here we go. It's... Oh, God. That's everything. I don't need that. It's crap. Yeah. Well, go to just like other IMDb page. They have it, should have it updated. Um, or is it? Is this something? Uh, now that we're talking about it, you know how far out it is, and should they do something more like the Good Dinosaur and wait till it's closer to the time to announce something like that? They can't. They can't. It's the. I mean, I guess I, I know it's that the, it's the marketing machine. You can't wait. I know that it it D twenty three. They need to have so much content to fill you know to fill up their panels and whatnot and to make an announcement like that is an easy pop yes you know it, it's an easy way to get the crowd excited to get people yeah, and it keeps the it keeps the conversation on what you're doing so it, you just can't not say anything about it especially when it's one of their more beloved films right but we also remember when monster monsters university was announced as a second movie for Monsters, Inc., everybody got excited, Monster. and then the movie wasn't as anywhere near as good as the first one. Right. It was still a really good movie, though. But, I mean, that's the thing is, you know, sequels have to be really, really good to catch people's eye, and it's not like Monsters University failed on that, and they made a lot of money with it, and they got really good reviews with it. Yeah, you're it. a lot harder on Monsters University than anybody else I know. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. Monster you University like is a... Pretty good movie. It's, it's Cars like, Two that I find a lot of Cars people are Two like, is, eh. is the most meh of anything they've, which done. I haven't seen, so I, I can't really speak to it. So that's Car- why when Cars I saw Cars two, Three Cars on there, I was kind of surprised. But Cars, Cars Two, two was Car- rough. 
Yeah. I was just surprised that they had Cars 3 on there. Uh, Cars, Cars 2 Cars made is their a biggest... lot of money. It did. Cars yeah. is their Cars biggest money. Cars has money. been their most profitable uh, entity, especially with uh, product and uh, yeah. merchandise. It's, uh, it, it was it's originally Toy Story. And yeah, then, but the, and those Hot Wheel cars took over. And then Cars and Frozen are the two biggest money makers for Disney and their kids' Frozen's lines. Insane. Okay, so the release, Frozen, the release Frozen day, isn't Pixar. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it's, matter. It, it, so it's, it's Disney. It's Disney. Right. Yeah, Frozen. Incredibles Bastard 2. runs both uh, entities. So yeah, he does. The same. Incredibles 2 is June 21st, 2019. It's also known as Isbav Bitigli 2. Because what? for some reason on IMDb, its language is spoken English and Czech. So they put the Czech title, <laughs> I Z B A V I T E L J I two. Yes, we like wow. the Incredibles. I don't think that's that, Czech. That's I don't think that's Czech. Czech. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it will be soon. Synopsis warning. In Russia, we speak Czech. <laughs> no, Czech is going to start speaking Russian. Soon. I know. <laughs> that's banning. kind of that was kind of the we will all be speaking Putinese very soon. Okay, so <laughs> the synopsis warning. Spoiler. We kind of died. This here, is all right? guest. <laughs> We've kind of died here with the show. But um, are, are you? Everybody still? You mean excited? we didn't die at the point when we started yeah. talking about your balls? Well, that was actually more entertaining. It died. It died when it was going up. Yeah, Ethan's bum. <laughs> so oh, yeah, anyway, whoa, 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 whoa! Nothing's going up my bum. That was rich, right? Yeah, I was paying attention earlier. Oh, no, wow. he was. He was taking oh. stuff from his bum. And giving it as uh, presents. Yes, yes, she was giving you No, presents. you said you had oh, presents, presents from your bum. Yeah, presents from the bum. So you had so it wasn't going. Them... No, it was coming. His, his specific, yeah, his specific <laughs> action that he was speaking was the removal instead of the insertion. So speaking of stuff this that comes out of your so, so speaking of things that come out of your bum, at least according to Sebastian, Star Wars Battlefront beta. I never said the beta was bad. See you. That that's yeah. You did. <laughs> Your whole Facebook page was bad. You said. Well, I am glad I didn't, I didn't order. I am glad I didn't order it because the okay, game let's, let's, did let's not just meet start. expectations. Let's let let's. I want let Sebastian speak his point. You've been playing Star Wars yes. Battlefront beta, and what? Give us your kind of quick review. So I'm going to lead with that. It's fun, and I and I've prefaced everything I've said is that I'm not going to say the game is not fun, but. It's way too buggy, and this is basically the final release. They basically said it's the final release of the game, and games don't get saved by magical patches that come out during release. It just doesn't happen. And last time EA released a game that was kind of this buggy, it, they have a terrible track record with fixing their bugs. But mostly... Which, and, game, which game was it? Oh, uh, the, even with the last Battlefield, so, was that, okay. so many release day bugs. But it, it's it, but that's sort, of a, that's sort of a moot point. I mean, the bugs are not game breaking entirely i've had a few issues where i've fallen through the map but mostly and i'm and i'm i ended up not being alone is that the game is not the game they sold everybody on they sort of promised that they were going to give everybody the experience of the game battlefield whether it be classes and 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 it's not just battlefield battlefield you know took a big page out of the original battlefront games that had different classes like medics and recon classes sniper classes you know to sort of match that like okay there's you know, different kinds of stormtroopers, but they sort of gave everybody this, uh, one reviewer said it best, it's organized chaos, where it's everybody running around with the same weapons and disobeying objectives. See, and this is why I, why I disagree with you, that and this is a beta. It's because not a beta, it's a you're demo. Only getting, you're only getting certain levels with certain items and certain characters because well, there aren't these are the ones the that games. they need to... There are there are different classes, just there are like no they classes were in the game. There's a customizable character that yes. you change the appearance of, and then you just buy the guns you want when you get credits that we know of so far. Doesn't no? They've already announced everything. There's no classes in the game. They've given everybody all the information, and that's why everybody's upset. Is that there's no there's no like assault class. You just buy whatever gun you want, and you know not just console players, but PC players of all guns. Like well. When you look at sort of the coding of the game, the weapons basically do the same amount of damage. They all have the same effective range. The grenades, the thermal detonators, and the ion grenades, they all do essentially the same level of damage. Like, they have a slug thrower, which acts as an in-game sniper rifle, Mm -hmm. but the range of that gun is exactly the same range of every blaster, apart from a slightly higher damage rate. 
Uh, and the, the, that's, uh, the vehicles in the game are pickups. You just run across, like, a TIE Fighter token. And you get in versus something like Battlefield, where each side has the same amount of vehicles, and if you choose to use them, you can choose to use them, versus this, where I've played entire matches, like on Hoth, where I've gotten into a TIE Fighter, and have been the only person in a ship for the entire ten minutes, because nobody can find the X-Wing token or the A-Wing mm-hmm. token. And that's been a huge issue of balance... Uh, for that, you know, and then it that's that's one of the bigger issues. Also, the idea, you know, like the heroes are, you know, you can camp special things like orbital bombardments. So there's a lot of big balance issues there. You can, even with the hero classes, you can, you know, know exactly where the hero classes are going to be. Like, if you want to be Luke Skywalker, boom, you just wait for the Luke Skywalker token. Yeah, you, to you've, you once you find them, you figure don't, out the map. You, you don't earn them, and that's sort of been everybody's big issue, is that, like, in the original Battlefield game, like, if you wanted to hop in a, in a, in a jet and play the aerial dogfights, you could do that. You just went over to the, you just went over to the, the runway, grabbed a jet, and got in this. It's like, well... I don't want to be in it. But see, this is what we're what you're seeing right now is one map with a. It's all the same. But though. see, I don't. I, I no, because I was looking at this last night when I was playing it, and I think that the larger scale maps, when you're playing the twenty on twenty, they have it set up where you you can pick up. You know, you do find the tokens for it, but that's not going to be. You're going to have different. It's the same across the entire. You're going to have different maps that you can either play as dogfighting. You can play as you know. Right, but the problem is, is that there's a limited amount of tokens, and they never balance out evenly. The idea that everyone basically is using the same weapons across the same amount of terrains. The fact that the objective, because the object, because there is no team structure to the game, and a lot of people have been finding this as sort of one of the big crux issues, is that. It doesn't matter. People just want that, you know, most kills on the leaderboard. I mean, if you really yeah, that, was, want... that was the surprise watching play last night, and they were on what was the first planet they, that you guys were on? Celeste. Celeste. Yeah, where you're supposed to like capture the pods and stuff right. like that. I'm like, why would you put an objective in an FPS online? I mean, they, well, they, no, well, that's you have to they find have. a bunch of people that'll do it. Yeah, no, they do it's it. Capture it the flag, works, but it never works. Well, it, it does work in Dude. games like Battlefield. It works in games like Halo, where you can, where the, it, basically they've given. They sold everybody on getting Battlefield as a game with Star Wars characters, but they gave everybody Call of Duty, which is a super casual game where basically everybody is equal and there is no challenge. You rank up. Right, but ranking up doesn't do anything. It's just, oh, look, I'm rank 50, but a rank 50 can use the same weapon as a rank 1. So in reality, again, that's, it, it's, that's sort of the crux of the issues. Everyone was expecting, like, Oh, good. I'm going to be the sniper class. Perfect. These maps are huge. They are huge. Mm-hmm. And the, the dear God, the the spawning system is awful. I've spawned in the middle of enemy fire. I've spawned. The biggest complaint I've heard is the spawning system. The spawning system is. Trav, have you played the game? Have you played the demo? I have not played it personally. I've watched people playing it. Yeah, I mean, I've spawned. <laughs> I mean, and that that's a bigger thing is like in in more hardcore games when you spawn, like in Battlefield, I pick my spawn point if I want to spawn, you know, farther back in the map. Yeah, but see, spawn. like Halo, you don't you 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 don't pick a spawning point. You get sp- re- you respawn wherever. And you sometimes will respawn right in front of somebody, and they will shoot you. To me, not in Halo, not anymore. Isn't, that's not been true for quite some time. Every every month pack I've played, it's still the same. That you respawn wherever, and sometimes you, don't you just will spawn wherever. And, but the, but the difference is, and you can you pick have maps where you can choose your spawn point, especially in Halo Four, you can do that. But uh, the bigger issue is that again, like you're given a partner, you're automatically assigned a partner in the game if you don't choose one. And I've had. My partner spawn in front of me when I've taken out guys. The fact that you spawn in groups in random locations, when you learn the spawn points of the game, because they're not all entirely random. Correct. I've, I've sat in an ATST and shot 20 guys in a row because they've all spawned next to each other in a chain. It's, yeah. and it's stupid. It's really stupid. And that's, well, that, that's on, one hold of hold the on, things. Because I've got a question. What are you playing on? I'm playing on the Xbox. Okay, you are playing on Xbox. But okay. the problems are universal no i i, I yeah, know because yeah, you mentioned pc before so i didn't know yeah travis you plays on, on pc the travis, so travis plays on plays pc on yeah see there's a lot of the things that you were saying and a lot of things that i've experienced with the game make me feel like it is strictly a beta let's put this out and there is time for no there, them, isn't. there, there the is there is time is done the game is coming out 
November seventeenth. That's it's right. Finished. Yeah, but somebody somebody within EA did mention that the beta released was an earlier build, unfinished version. Whether that's a true statement by that person, I don't know. It's but. EA. I I one. I, it's they. Every time things go wrong, companies always say like they always give off something or they always try and mitigate sort of the damage. And it's not again. It's not that the game is bad, but it's a super casual game. And it's not exactly what they promised. If there is a different final version, fine. I, I Again, that's why I'm saying I'm going to wait to buy, to judge the game on its final merits when it's finished. I'm not going to... But the game as it is now and what they are, what they have finally said, like, this is the game you're getting, or at least when they provided the, the, the demo of it to play at home, it's like, oh, I can wait. I got all the unlocks in an hour, which is four guns. And then after using all four guns... They did exactly the same damage despite the stat mm-hmm. listing. They have exactly the same range despite the stat listing. They have a scope function that all of them have the exact same zoom range on the scope, including the sniper rifle with the cooldown. And that's why it doesn't. That's why it's, to me it still feels like it's it's unfinished with this. Did oh, you? Did oh, you? This is two points. This is two, this, the question two points. One of the points you mentioned casual gaming. Yes, as a casual gamer, I think that's. That's fine. By, I, yeah. I think that's by design because I know yeah. I know a few people who my friend Eddie is buying a PS4 because he wants this game so bad mm-hmm. because he loved all the ones before it. But you keep mentioning, uh, Sebastian, you keep mentioning that it's not what they promised, sort of thing. Like it wasn't what you were expecting. When was the last time a game actually gave you what it was expecting? Because I feel like that's all over the place. I know Travis and I, you, you, you and I have talked about this with something like Titanfall, where it seemed to be promised as this is going to be totally different than anything you've ever right. played before, and it comes out and you're like, this is the same thing I've been right. playing, and it's then just the yeah. mech or whatever. Yeah, but it's all. But and, you know, speaking of Titanfall, which is very interesting, is like the like it's a game that as much as I still play it and I still love it, it's a game that like Battlefront, uh, at least the feeling I'm sort of getting, and at least the way the game structure is. Uh, is a game that Battlefront and Titanfall don't have single player campaigns. So they do. Titan, uh, Battlefront has a single. It does player. not have a. It does not have a. It has single player survival modes, but there is no story mode to the game. Like Titanfall has a has no story. It's all online. Well, I think that's what we talked about when and Titanfall came out. Is that game yeah. developers are kind of moving away from it right. because they're like everybody wants to play the multiplayer. Not kind of. <laughs> They yeah. moved away from well, it. Well, no, they're assuming that everybody they're, wants they, to they play ass- it. And that's the big like issue. That's exactly right. Chad. They assume people, because people, the, the replayability is in the multiplayer, but there is still something to be said for having, like, when you don't want to play multiplayer, you want to play a story, and they keep thinking yeah. people don't want it, so games like Titanfall <clears throat> removed it. And what happened with Titanfall? It's a game that immediately went on discount a month it or died. two later and died well, they keep really saying fast. that it has a mission-based multiplayer. It's a mission-based t- multiplayer but, game. But, but that's not a story. It's not a single-player storyline game. But this it requires does have... you. It requires you to use the internet. It require or it, it requires you to be constantly logged on because it's EA. You need to be logged on to the internet. That's that's their own stupid. That's the that's their 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 EA. What is it? The the battle you can go uh, origin origin. origin. But yeah. that's and that sort of comes to the crux of the issue. Did you not play the Tatooine uh, mission? I did. But it's not a mission. It's just it is. survival mode. But no, it, it's it's a it's a single or co-op there's no story co-op mission. There's, but that but that's not a story. It's just it's just complete this objective. There's no you know Mon Mothma has sent you here. Here's some cool cutscenes. Let's have you know general. Let's have the general solo talk to her about this crazy mission. We're gonna drop you off here. This is why we got to do this. That you know of. It, it, it's not in the game. If it's already They've there, already they said there's it. no story mode. It's not about yeah, announcements. Like the last Battlefront game I played was the one for the okay, PSP, which was a story. The, which did have a story. Description, the description for the Tatooine quote-unquote mission, literally their description for it is, survival mission on Tatooine is a single or cooperative mode where you hold off waves of Imperial Stormtroopers and TIE Fighters coming into attack. Yeah, there is no mission there. Well, that's it's basically what Battlefront Two was. No, Battlefront Two had a story mode that you could play by yourself, and then if you wanted to get into the multiplayer, especially on PC, you could. And Battlefront Two still has a lot of longevity because of the modding community and because it has things that gamer that gamers who want replay value want. When I play something like, there's a reason why Battlefield Four is still being played post-launch, you know, three years later versus something like Call of Duty that has a new game every year. 
is that Battlefield has a competitive play style. Call of Duty, you're done. You Once you get to rank 50, you've kind of played everything. Versus Battlefield where uh, you can become proficient in class. If you want to become a sniper, you can become proficient. If you want to become proficient at flying the jets, you can become proficient. If you want to be assault or recon, they have elements of the game that you need to work towards to maintain your attention. Versus this game, which I'm getting the feeling of, where it's just like, great, I got all the weapons in an hour. And then I found out, well, it didn't really matter because all the weapons do exactly the same thing. Whatever. Okay, that's fine. I just kind of busted my ass for nothing. And it, it's not, again, not to say, again, the big preface is not to say it's not fun and that it's not Star Wars. Right. And, and that's the big, I think, the thing a lot of people are sort of, like, gamers who actually care about, like, if I'm paying $60... For just online, one, you've charged me $20 too much because there's no story that I can just go like, you know what, I really want to... Re like with Halo, I bought the Master Chief Collection and when it didn't work for me for a month to play the online mode, I at least got to replay four awesome games mm -hmm. and get the beautiful story mode. This is like, you're charging me 60 bucks just to play online. There's no story to this. But there's no replay. Which, which here. back in the day, if you were getting a game that was purely only online or like an MMO, you were paying actually half price. Right. And because it was expected that you were getting half, not only half the game, but you had to always be online, and you would probably have to pay online monthly fees. Right, exactly. And and for but, me, and that's the thing for me is right. Like um, immediately playing this beta, I went like, "All right, this isn't the game I was expecting." Fine, they gave me a demo to try that out. Perfect. I have just saved myself sixty dollars right off the bat for a game that didn't turn out exactly how I expected, and that's fine. That's you know, that's you know good for them that I at least got to try before I buy versus most companies where it's just like, Oh, you're get, you bought, you got Sim city on pre-order and you couldn't log on to a server for two weeks. Well, <laughs> you're SOL, man. You just wasted 60 bucks. It's interesting though, because you, you versus, don't care by, about buying this game now when it comes out. Right. But you, you said earlier, you bought Titanfall and you still got, play Titanfall. I bought Titanfall for thirty nine dollars on sale on with uh, deals with gold on my Xbox Live, I didn't pay full price for the game. And if you paid full price for the game, and Watch when it takes you, you, when it takes you fifteen minutes to find a match because nobody's playing, well, at least you didn't pay full price versus the people who paid sixty, who I'm sure like shit. I paid, yeah, si I paid sixty dollars for a game that died in two months. I paid sixty. I, I paid it. I, I still play it from time to time. I, I look, and that's again, I still play it too, but. I saved money on it, and I didn't wait. And Battlefront feels like a game that will be forty bucks in two or three months from now. See, and when, when you watch this commercial, you wonder why is there no Halo movie? <laughs> uh, actually, there's no Halo movie because everyone who wants to do a Halo movie doesn't want to do it the way Microsoft wants it. Yeah. So they Microsoft keep no. is strangleholding that. Yeah, whole thing. and they are doing their this own. This is commercial for whatever this whatever this Halo. It's Halo, 5. Halo, 5. Halo, 5. Halo Five. This looks awesome. It does look awesome. I'd watch well, a movie like the, this. The, the Halo cool. Four commercials were amazing. Well, they also, yeah. well but, Halo yeah, Three but, was. But cool. also, Microsoft has decided. Well, we can do oh, our own true. digital TV shows. We yes. can do our own digital yeah. cartoons. So I think they're. I think they anyway. sort of like. Well, we got a lot of money. So um, here's, here's here's my question though. Yeah. Do we think that there's anything to my ideas that EA made the game bad on purpose? Because that way, that's the only way that people like PewDiePie and all these idiots who do video game run-throughs will get hit. No, I, I think no. I, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. But no, it's that's, just, that's fine. It's but just kind of funny that that's the new kind of you I don't know, think the, and, the new zygus of how many people are just like, oh, I'm going to play this and you're going to watch me play it and I'm just going to say how fucking terrible it is. Well, and that's it's like this it's new the new thing. it's the new no, way of reviewing. To make money, not no, money. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm kidding, kidding, but it's just but see, funny. here's another thing. But I think For, I think honestly, like no, they didn't. I didn't. I would never say they made the game bad. But I think Dice, who made a game as complex as Battlefield, right? You know how like they basically made Call of Duty, and everyone is one. They've sort of got the sticker shock on the price for a game that's not a full game. They're also going it's like, but you're Dice. You made. Battlefield, you guys have and made. Well, this leads had single player games in it. Yeah, too. It but here's here's player. here's my here's my serious question though, because this has been. I think they made a game for casual people. No, who, I think they made a game where they cut corners because they know it's Star Wars and people will buy it. That 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 is that is entirely possible, and I will not because that's been that that's theory. been a bane of the video game industry for years. Everyone has always said licensed games suck yes. because you're selling the license. One right. of two reasons: one, either the license comes really late and you only have a couple of months to right. do a game, 
or it's you already know people are going to pick this up. Right. It's entirely so feasible. We can have a game where we can cut corners all over the place, but because it's Star Wars, people every Star Wars fan anyways. is going to buy it. Look, here's the and other. They're going to forgive it to a certain degree. It's like, right. yeah, it sucks, but I'm playing as a. Star that's my and that's my that's my big issue is that like it's it's dice and I don't feel like. They and I'm not saying they're doing that. Purpose. I'm just saying well, I think it's a realistic. That's entirely possible. possible. All of that is that you know if you look back over dice's history, they're well known for being a group that makes complex games albeit shooters they layer in many multiple complexities as opposed to the activisions or the call of duties or the the other guys where it's a more what what we've been talking about like a casual game a, right. a lighter experience where you can just plug in the game load up a gun and just start shooting at each other there was some strategy involved and some classes involved with battlefield and the other thing is i've been watching the development process with dice and all of their producers, while they've been developing, have been talking about, we, we're taking great care to make this a really good game for fans of Battlefront and fans of Star Wars and people who know the history of those two first games that mean so much to that community at large. And so they, they were, you know, professing this great interest in detail and strength and how good this game was going to be. So if it is, if, if the retail copy is kind of this loose casual weaker game what the hell was dice doing right I, well this I reminds know, me a lot of you know that ea is capable of, capable of that because ea has such wide grasping tentacles over so many different developers i get that they have the potential and they've shown the potential for releasing unfinished games or bad games or casual and they games do it all the time yeah but for dice specifically who has been a leader of making quality first person shooter games to drop the ball, if if so they have, right. drop the ball on a game like this. That's a major, major loss for them. That's that go. Hard well, that's the. I think that's my point though. How much of a loss is it going to be? Because you're going to make a whole bunch of money. Because Star, Star Wars fans are going to buy it, and it doesn't matter because there's this, a lot this of people who paid me, for it. And when they stop right. playing, the money's already yeah. been given up. This reminds me a lot of when they did the Star Wars multiplayer, uh, the online, the RP, the yeah. ROP, whatever, the, the MMRO, yeah. whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, MMO. It felt like to me that for like two years, they were promising you how this was going to be different than Warcraft. It's going to be different. You're going to have all no. these different things. And then when it came out, it was like, it's the same game as every right. other game. It, it just, Warcraft and it was gone. immediately forgotten. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm, that, that's what I'm, st- I'm hearing this over and over and over again in terms of video. I'm not a big video game guy. I'm a very small video game guy. I don't even have a new system, but in being that outsider listening in, this is what it sounds like over and over again, is that you're getting promised these games that are like, this is going to be the game changer, this is going to change everything, it's going to be amazing, and you're getting a game that's exactly like every well, other to, game that's out Well, to, to your original question, is there a game that met my expectations? Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Five has met my expectations. In fact, it exceeded Witcher my expectations. Three. Witcher 3. Witcher 3 far exceeded, far exceeded yeah. expectations. None of this stuff out there. And it it's happen. just kind of like... But no, I, I, do, I do agree that there's a lot of people who will who are casual casual gamers who will who will ignore the flaws of the game because it's Star Wars and that's not necessarily a bad thing but it's also not necessarily a good thing because then that just allows well, them to keep when you, when you making get, mediocre yeah, when products. you get casual so, gamers they don't know how much better it could be I right. could well, probably here's pick up the that other game side of go, this is fine because I've never played Battlefield right. so I wouldn't know what I'm missing out on the other side of this is for years people that play FPSs don't care about the story modes. They you do. saw you saw the Call of Duty story no, modes no, no, drop no, no, down no, a lot farther. They do care about story. I don't agree with that at all. They do care about story mode. They care enough that this has enraged them that there is no story mode in I don't Battlefront. Know, as someone so, who's very so casual and playing games, to me, I prefer a story mode rather than a yeah. I'm in that player. too. I, one of the reasons I haven't bought, and we've talked about this numerous times, one of the reasons that I've resisted buying a new system is because these games hold no appeal to me. Something like Titanfall has absolutely no appeal to me. I'm not You I'm don't want to play with enough. other people. I don't want to play with other people because you watched me play Battlefront last night. I didn't kill any... No, I got one kill. Yes. And I got killed 375,000 times. But the one survival mode... I have mode. absolutely no interest in having some kid from Brazil wax me 35 times... It just doesn't mean anything to me. But you played, play the tattoo- you played the Tatooine okay, okay, okay. survival mode beta at Comic-Con. Yes. Yeah. And you enjoyed it. 
by myself, yeah. Yes. yes. But if you're telling me that's one story of but that's, look, but that's I'm a not local, paying 60 that's bucks a, to play but that's every a local game yeah. that you can play with your friend on the console. But that's it. It's just a it's just yeah. a horde mode. This is where you're just facing wave after Call wave of Duty. Guy. The last the last FPS game that I played yeah, was but which, which, which Call of Duty is the one in the you had hordes like that. Yeah, but there was well, also on, a story on. mode you could play. Which Call of Duty is the one with, that takes place in America? The one that starts with the, the, the modern Russian, warfare modern warfare one. Okay, so that's the last one that I've played. In terms of actually playing in a story mode, I played a co-op story mode with my friend Eric. It was like a and Tom I Clancy it. novel. Yeah, and it was huge. And we played for two days. I spent mm-hmm. the weekend at his house, and we just kept playing and playing and playing. Yeah, you're telling me I can't do that with this game. I can't do that with a game like Titanfall. And you're playing, and, and that's where it seems it. to be going. So for someone like me, who's the ultimate casual gamer, I have absolutely no interest in this game. Yeah. Right, and that's and, my and problem. Going, with the, the, I picked up the PSP. Point. I actually bought the PSP with the Vader on it with that Battlefront yeah. game because one of the reviews early on was this has a story mode that's deeper than any other story mode of the Battlefronts that were on the, right. the systems because you're playing as this rebel, uh, you know, what's his face, the, the, the rebel uh, um, uh, special forces trooper, and you're going through these particular missions as you're trying to get to Endor or whatever it was. So that's... Here's the problem I had with the beta, is that it is Star Wars, and... If this is supposed to be something, the first this is the first Star Wars game since Disney has owned uh, Lucasfilm, which makes me sad because there was that uh, the prison game that was coming out like the uh, like thirteen 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 yeah, thirteen, 13, 13 which, you know what the funny thing about amazing they're, and it got they're talking about trying to remake it. I hope they. Yeah. I well, this they is the thing. Back. Hold on. Well, here's Before, the thing about the thirteen thirteen. Hold on. This is actually goes back to the thing. I know, we'll let you get your point. This Lucasfilm thing, but when they shut down LucasArts, they were working on a Battlefront game. Which there is was like, one that was 99% finished. Right. So why the hell is this game so bad? Because DICE took over and started from because scratch. DICE why would you start from... That, that's the thing that confuses me. If you're going to shut down LucasArts as, as a company and you have a game that's almost completely done... Why would you not finish There's, there's, no, that, there's that, no excuse for this game to not question. be as close to 100% well, you as you can get. Completely different, uh, you, you hired a completely different developer to right. make the game. So you're not going to take a finished game from a different developer and publisher and give it to them and say, hey, finish and polish this. Because they're working, they're working with completely different engine builds. Right. They're working with completely different And obviously it's a couple of years You've got to also pay those people like for no, what I, they've it, done. It's, it's more of just me wanting to bring up the point of you, you, you had stuff that was in development. You right. shut it down completely. If you're going to shut it to down start over. and start over, your mm-hmm. start over yeah. has to be better than what's there. Who right. knows what that game was? Maybe that game was complete crap, too. Well, it got shut down. I mean, it, it wasn't It be. wasn't like it got shut down because Disney was buying. It was the whole acquisition was going through. It got shut down way, way, way before. Lucas, Lucas Arts shut it down being 99% finished way back before. Well, like they years shut down ago. everything at LucasArts. Yeah, no, well, no, but this was years before the, the, the purchase was even considered, that they shut it down. They had, it was, it was closer to after Battlefront Two came out that they started working on that game. But, it's the, anyway. it, but it, it does sort of fall into that crux like of casual things. Where like, we, we, we can nitpick. Like, there's, like, the, there's health regeneration instead of health packs. So, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, so there's no need for like a medic class. Infinite ammunition. I know they're blasters, but even something is like finding heat up and recharge things. stations to recharge your blaster. Well, as they said, in, in, you talk about. I know they're blasters, but in in, in universe, they've yeah, said they, blasters have ammunition they, because, because yeah, it's not have, it's not a true yeah. laser. It's yeah. a, it's an energy bolt, right? right. And yeah. that's why so you, you have to have, yeah. So, yeah, it's a power pack that has an infinite number of, or a, a finite number right. of shots. Right, and it's, um, for me, that's like, that sort of goes into that Battlefield-esque, like, it's like, I want a challenge, like, if I can just sit, you know, if I can just stand there and continually fire as long as I don't hit cooldown, it's like, well, whatever, you know, I don't, there's no point in the game, like, in Battlefield, like, oh, I'm out of ammunition, I gotta survive until I can find, a, you know, somebody who laid down an ammo box somewhere. Well, here's you know? what I was gonna say, my problem with the game is, it does it, because it is Star Wars, and there are a finite number of children fans now, even more so than there was before. Well, For that, me, that, that, there's a always kid, exponentially going to be more fans in the future. Because but of but what I'm saying is well, that you, you, hope. you yeah you hope. But what I'm saying is this isn't a game that a 
seven to ten year old can pick up and start playing as a Star Wars game. Yes, I can. This game, yes. Battle Battlefront as it they'll, is now. Yes. You remember the kids that were waxing us? They'll, they'll, get, they'll or whatever. Get, if if they can't Truth shoot, is, they'll, they'll probably get bored because there's no challenge. Well, the they game, can't right? kill. I mean, there's so many people that are are massively good at this game. I mean, yeah, like, and they're all I'm not, seven I'm not to ten years bad. old. I'm not bad at FPSs, but I'm not good by any means. And you're getting beaten by seven. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm getting killed out there. That's what we said. That's the running joke with us is that. Oh, Pablo. No, no, mommy. I need to do more. I'm beating people in America, mommy. No, 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 Pablo. You need no, to go to it, bed. No, no, I need to. Hold on. I'm going to wax this R.A. Rain dude. Oh, he's dead. All right, cool. Look, here's the thing. I, I enjoy playing the game. I know it, for me, it felt a lot like playing Titanfall. Yes, but Titanfall, I think, was a better game because the matches were also really fast paced. You had a lot more enemies on screen because the AI was there to supplement the large maps. Because something like, like when you're playing the, the Capture the Pods, that's a really big map. Mm-hmm. And something yeah, I like... Found that, I found that frustrating, Hoth too. Like, is, God, this takes forever Hoth to try Hoth is massive, to and Hoth is also divided into three separate yes. acts of a stage. But when I've respawned in the Act 1 portion of the stage, when everyone is in Act 3, and I've had to spend two or three minutes just getting to the other end of the map, and that's just dumb. Right, and I've had But it. it's also but but the thing that Titanfall did so well is that the maps are big because there are robots. There's, you know, about eight players on each side, but they supplement the players with uh artificial intelligent characters. You know, like there's also two hundred AIs running around that you can engage in combat sure. on your way to the objective. And someone who sucks like me might be able to kill them. Well, you and you can still level versus, up and versus stuff something with like a, the Battle with... of Hoth, where it's like I'm spending five minutes right, but uh, but the, in fact, well, not see, even five minutes. I start at the beginning, and then the game is over because you can camp the <laughs> orbital bombardments, and the rebels can win every time. See, the thing that I, that I didn't like was I. It was boring for me when I got in and out at because it it's just on so rails. slow. It's yeah. on rails; you don't control it. Yeah. Um, the being in a Tie Fighter and an X Wing were okay, but dog fighting is was really bad because it's really not, hard. It's and not really the, bad. It's not the dog fighting of Battlefield, which is it's slowed down and the maps are large enough where, like you know, you engage in a dog fight. In it was hard fight. to get a and trying like, to get a target lock. It was near, nearly impossible. Near. Yeah, um, and you, like you're on the under of the map, it's like, well, I got. It also turn doesn't around. feel like they give you the maneuverability. It, right. Like if you're in a Tie Fighter, you, the best game that you could be able to find is figure out a way to get a Tie Fighter, give you that true maneuverability. Of uh, the in-universe explanation for a Tie Fighter is that it can almost literally turn, turn on a ball, right. yeah. and that's what if you're fighting an X-wing, that's your advantage. If it, when I played X-wing, I did God find... knows what is it, thirty fucking years ago on on PC, I had a problem because like it was so tough to get you know turned around and move. And that's why dogfighting is so tough. That's right. why this idea that you yeah. know, well, the maps are big, but the ships move so fast across the maps. Mm-hmm. There's, it's not like Battlefield where they, they've taken the time, like, well, you're slowing the jets down. Or now. you can slow to yourself down. Right, and you can do that, but it's kind of tricky in the game. And there's also, when you're, like, attacking targets on the ground, like, they artificially shrink the map. Yes. For the, so it, the not everything is exactly to scale, and that throws me off, too. But that sort of comes to the crux of the issue, is that you want to sort of point your finger, it's like, ha, you didn't pre-order the game, but it also goes like, good, I've saved money, because now I can wait for a release version of the game, and then sort of when I now you can buy I can, it used on Christmas. I, I can well, I, I would buy it on sale with you know digitally when it goes when it, when the price drops down in a couple months, and I get my deals with gold. The other thing I had trouble with was in the snow speeder, and it one time I was able to get a target lock for my uh, for my grappling hook. Yeah, and it's a, it's a quick time event. Yes, it's it, it's meant to be super casual because like. I'm in a snowspeeder. I can fly. Why can't I just encircle the at at myself like in the old Rogue Squadron games? No, you just have to right. keep you have to keep your reticle in a box for a minute to try mm-hmm. and get a harpoon lock. It's like, and you can only do it when the shields are down. Right. Is, That's the that was the problem I had was waiting for the shields to be down. Also, like in terms of ground movement, like the you know the Empire has the ATSDs and the at ats and stuff. But it's like, why are there no tauntauns to move the the rebels across the map a little faster? You know, where's the... Because like, Luke killed them all with his lightsaber. Right, and then it's, it, there's a lot of issues. And, the, like, there's a lot of nitpicky things. But it also comes to the fact that, like, it's not the game you promised. But that's okay, you know. But I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who aren't playing the demo and have paid, you know, 60 plus dollars for perks and extra things that they get on right away. And then we'll get the game and be like, oh, shit. Well, like I said, for me, it felt like an unfinished beta, and I'm still excited to see the game come out and see what is going to be different, especially, hopefully, see what's different than what is going on now with it. I doubt it will be different, because it's EA. 
Um, speaking of not liking things, Daniel Craig went off on a tangent, I guess. During, well, it wasn't a tangent. Let me find the actual quote here. He, during an interview, it was in, once again, it was in a London or a you know a, it was a, a, yeah, it was a, a Great Britain interview that we've started to see actors really opening up and saying how they feel. Yeah, which is weird because he's already rumored to be scheduled for two more movies after this one, so... Yeah, I'd kind of squash those movies. I think right that now. that may have just been, like, ended with his comment from it. Well, I... Going back through this, you remember, the time between Quantum of Solace and Skyfall was About huge because of... Years. Yeah, because of the MGM yeah, breakup yes. thing. And at the time, they, he had kind of said, I don't know if I'm ever going to play this character again. It's just going to be too much time. When they did Skyfall... They, um, Bless you. the rumors had already started that both Bond and Sam Mendes were not going to do another film. And Skyfall was a success on so many levels. And they said, yeah, we got to do another one. They were able to, once they were able to talk Sam Mendes into doing the next one, then apparently Daniel Craig said, I'll do it as long as Sam does. Yeah. It. Right. And then they uh, waited uh, for Sam cause he was doing a, he was directing a show on Broadway. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to give him time to not only put together a script, but also come back to direct, which is fine. But which brings us to now, now that the movie's done and Daniel Craig's starting to do the press junkets, he gets in a press junket uh, in, was it, it was in London, I think. Okay, so this is The Guardian, what date is this? I cannot tell. This is the 8th of October, so this is three days before the article that I just read. Um, after four films of 007, Daniel Craig says he's had enough and would rather slash my wrists then reprise the role. That wasn't enough. 47-year-old admitted that if he did return his bond, it would be just for the money. He took a similarly dismiss dismissive opinion of the... Bleh. Let me check this one more time. That's just a summary of the He took a article. similarly dismissive opinion on that staple of British conversational life, the question, who should take over in the role? Daniel Craig's quote, look, I don't give a fuck. During a brief but open interview with Time Out magazine before the release of this month's latest bond title, Craig also conformed Confirmed. I can't read all of a sudden. <laughs> um, strongest words came when Craig was asked if he could imagine another film in the role. Now, I'd rather slash my wrists, he replied. No, not at the moment. Not at all. That's fine. I'm over it at the moment. We're done. All I want to do is move on. Craig added a slight caveat saying this would be his view for at least a year or two. He added, I don't know what the next step is. I have no idea. Because, not because I'm trying to be cagey. Who the fuck knows? At the moment, we've done it. I'm not in discussion with anybody about anything. If I did another Bond movie, it would only be for the money. It's worth noting, however, that only last month Craig said he would continue for the role as long as I'm physically able. So I think, I think some of this. Well, the the actual quote was it's that hyperbole. he he, he no he, I mean, he had the, he said he I, I I'd rather take this bottle, break it, and slash my wrist with it, and and kill myself than do Bond again. And then he, the guy kept going on and with you know another question. Yeah, and well, that's what I think. Some of this is is. So who knows what You're the question is before? The interview. Well, it's also you don't know what the interviewer is. Right. I mean, if the interviewer is being contentious with him, then maybe he's just trying to do something. He's trying to get Look, him off Craig his is, back. Craig is an odd cat. He's right. an odd cat anyway. He's a guy who refuses to talk about his personal life mm -hmm. yeah. um, and is very, very uh, defensive of it. If you ask him about any of it, right. he gets very defensive quickly. It's like, look, that's my life. Don't, don't even F and talk to me. Um, yeah, but we've seen this a, this year with a couple other actors where they've been put in situations where they just want to get the fuck out of the interview. Well, it's also like he, it's like they also it's like he, he, they know he can't answer those questions as to whether or not he'll be Bond again. So any answer, as least as far as he's concerned, especially because it's so private, it will do. And if he, if it requires hyperbole, if somebody's really pressing the issue, that's fine. Everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my god, how horrible for you to say that!" But it's all the truth. Is like. Whatever gets the interviewer to shut up and move on to another question, I'm sure works. Yeah. And the truth is, is that he did say he would do it for as long as he'd able, you know, a month ago. But it's also, like, I'm sure if they wheelbarrowed money to his house, like, here's $30 million, you want to be Bond again? He's already basically said he would do it if they offered it to him with the yeah. right Yeah, and it's also, you got to look at timing, too. It's, right. It's, when you have someone who's honest with this fact that he's been doing this movie for two years. Yeah. You know, pre-production, production, post-production, post and now media... You're, you're sick of it. This always reminds me, Michael Crichton did this after he wrote Jurassic Park, and, and it was released. I mean, he wrote four or five drafts for that, 
And he said at one point, he's like, I never wanted to talk about dinosaurs again. I could, yeah. I, if, if you came up to me and offered me a million dollars to just stand here and name dinosaurs, I would kill myself. He's like, I'm just sick of it. Well, it's like because, what they... And it's the same thing here. It's, it's, it's probably Sam the same Ring thing. Right. Everybody yeah. said after Spider-Man, you know, with, with all the Spider-Man movies, they were like, look, we've spent, you know, especially they called it the trilogy, you know, fatigue. You spend, you know, six, eight years working on a trilogy. By the time you're done, you just... You don't want to even see whatever project right, until yeah. the next one, and that's why usually the trilo- the third movie in the trilogy gets so bad is because people have been working on it for so fucking long that they right. just all right, here we go again. Yeah, we'll find out about the next Bond in about a year, and if he decides to stay on, they'll make a big announcement like it's still Daniel Craig, and they'll still do their regular press conferences. Mm-hmm. And with something like Bond, Bond is Bond very... is going to keep going no matter what. Right, it Bond, matter exactly. Who's it's not going to. It's going to keep going no matter who. But Bond is also a very open franchise about what they do they hold press conferences when they announce a new movie when they it, just for that and when they announce a new bond they make an even bigger deal out they of it they make a big press conference for the the theme yeah, as song big as, as big as that right. that franchise is here we don't realize how big it is in in, 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 in england, england. In, right. in great britain yeah. and and worldwide it's a huge yeah. franchise well yeah i mean it's it, it's one of those precious properties to the uk that right. you know but that's the thing is like when when they're going to make big when they're going to make bond news there it's not like here in the US where they're like keep it hush hush and then like there'll be something in entertainment weekly about it and that'll be the end of it no for bond there'll be press conferences they'll be Yeah, Spectre was like a big press conference. Right. When they just released yeah. the song by Sam Smith mm-hmm. it was huge. It was a big deal, yeah. And it's such it, an odd choice. To me, it's an yeah. odd choice, but I actually really dug the theme song. Very, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. And, and well, I mean, you know, it, it's, but it, it's it, become one of those things where it's like when they make Mon news, they'll say it. And yeah. here in America, we've gotten so used to speculation. It's like, no, it's it's Eon. They're pretty forthright about. Everybody what thought Adele doing. was a, a weird choice for the last one. No, because she's a big British singer. Yeah, I mean that's the th- like if they had done Florence yeah. and the Machine, I would have been totally. I, I totally understand that. But Florence and the Machine well, would have been Sam's good. That was a British singer too. Is he? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's yeah. why I think it's a right. Yeah. It's an odd choice. I didn't realize that. Okay, so that makes Florence sense and the now. Machine would have been a really good been choice. But I don't think they would have gone with doing the weirdest one for me has always been Cheryl Crow. Like, where did you get Cheryl Crow? Really? Because um, she was popular at that time. Yeah, yeah. and the Alicia Keys Jack White yep. song is also like it's not a bad oh, song. Which one is that one? That's Quantum of Solace's theme song, which is not God, a bad. It's not a bad song, but it's not a Bond theme. Yeah. Yeah. There's not enough. Food. Okay, so, so let go in, hold on. I just want to play this game. So, okay, Daniel Craig has killed himself. He's not Bond. They're going to make a Bond film. Let's say it's going to be three years before we see it. Idris Elba. Don't do the no. Idris Elba thing. No, I'm so sick of that. So I got two choices. On you. Uh, Michael Fassbender uh, around He'll be too old. X-Men First Class. He'll be too old then. What does it mean? I mean, this is honestly realistic right now. Would you hire Michael Fassbender to do it yes. right now? I sure. love that idea. Paul Bettany. M- because Michael Fassbender actually looks like Bond from the book. Paul Bettany's an interesting choice. Um, I know listening to Carrick, they also said mm-hmm. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy would be an interesting choice. I loved Ralph's choice of Clive Owen. I said that before Daniel Craig. I'm I like, thought about Clive Owen. Clive Owen would be, great, Owen would be cool. He'll be old. Dude. I think he's too old. Yeah. Well, even Idris Elba oh, hey, is, will be are, in his 50s. Old, but Pierce Brosnan was doing it well. Yeah, that's late. the thing. Is Clive Owen can be... I don't need Clive Owen... But you want Bond to start in his late 30s, early 40s. What about Ewan McGregor? To it? It, uh, versus like starting old right off really? the bat. Mm-mm. People well, were talking about Ian McGregor at one point. Yeah, but I, I, I don't uh, The guy him. from Homeland would be good, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, the redhead? Yeah, just well, dye his anything. hair black. Boom. The thing with Clive Owen, whenever it's like he's too old, he's too old. But the thing is, I don't think it matters anymore. Yeah. Because, no, I mean, you're going to have a stuntman anyway. No, but right. when Kevin and Bean said Paul Bettany, I was like, that would Paul be Bettany's a really interesting, interesting choice. choice. Not, I mean, they said thing, the same thing with Daniel Craig. Like, well, it's not classic. He's not classically you know, handsome. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Like, Daniel Craig's a damn good-looking human being. Like, come on. But and see, everyone was Paul, worried about Paul that. Bettany like, kind of has that. He he has that cross between. He's got like, that swallow, that swallow, and that sophistication. But also that old Bond feel. Because I'll be honest, when you saw when you saw Kingsman, I'm like, dude, I could totally see Colin Firth being. Oh, I, that was another choice I, I thought about. If the storyline is and is the, the themes that they're going with with Daniel Craig's Bond is is that he's older. Is he's getting older as the, as it keeps right. You can continue that sort of story. You're not going to, but I would love to see them continue it and actually do this idea that. 007 is, it's simply a code name. James yeah. Bond is simply a code name. But they've yeah. already said no. What about, yeah. what about somebody like a Mark Strong? I can see Mark Strong. Mark Strong would be interesting. That'd be an interesting choice, yeah, too. Yeah, Mark Strong looks closer to Bond, uh, what he's supposed to look like. Of course, Mark Strong would play a, a better Bond villain. 
Right. But it, that's the thing is like, some he, point Eon has it. always been very careful to say like, basically the, with, with the Skyfall in general, they're like, no, Bond is not a code name. Please stop asking. Mm-hmm. It's never been a code name. There's never been anything in the books that have suggested it's a code name. There's been nothing in the films to suggest it's a code name. It's just that people can't seem to get over the fact that he looks different. They can read a Spider-Man comic and have him drawn, you know, a hundred different ways over 60 years. But when it comes to James Bond, people just, their minds explode that Pierce well, I think Brosnan it's because, is the same guy as Sean Connery. Well, I think like, you find out he's a push... Time Lord and he just keeps changing. Oh, God, his... Shut up. <laughs> um, oh, my God. I think the idea is because you have continuity within the actors that play There it. have people there. To there's, a certain well, there's degree. Also, there's and sometimes also continuity there is... in the movies, too. Right. And that's where I think people are kind of like trying to connect everything and trying to figure out why they look different because, but I mean, we accepted it. When we look at Marvel films, you know, our, our Terrence, Terrence Howard, Howard gets replaced by right. Don Cheadle. And nobody goes, Oh, is that a code name? You know, it's ridiculous. Nobody <laughs> yes. is like, you know what? Nobody watches star Wars and then goes like, it's like, Oh, so is Darth Vader a code name? Cause Sebastian Shaw doesn't look anything like Hayden Christensen. Well, you McGregor and Alec well, Guinness. Yeah. Alec Guinness and Ewan McGregor. They don't, they don't look like, are they, is that a, is aunt Viv from fresh Prince of Bel Air code name? <laughs> That's two different actors. What's going oh, God, on? I forgot about that one. But it, the thing I'm thinking about <laughs> is because of how... How did we get a fresh Prince of Bel-Air? <laughs> so the, the way that I think about heads. it is that um, how many years that James Bond has made movies. And I think that plays in the factor that people are just like, we've seen so many James Bonds, and they're all kind of like 30 to 40 years old, you know, does that play a role of like, hey, you know, well, it's just a code name because we've seen so many actors play it, and he's still kind of the same age in each movie. Right. Granted that that could be just, you know, people don't yeah, think there's, there's not a lot of connections look, we, or continuity yeah. between, between actors. Like, we basically, look, obviously, when they did Daniel Craig, nothing in that film. Well, that, that was, but they've also said yeah. that was clearly a... a, a <laughs> yeah, re- because re- Pierce Brosnan stuff sucks. But also, but it's you also know, like, there is a clear continuity, especially with, with his wife being the biggest one. You know, uh, in on Her Majesty's Secret Service, she he, they marry and she's killed. But in Her Majesty's Secret Service, right. to to give people the idea that it's the same character, he opens his desk drawer and he starts reminiscing about Honey Rider because he has her <laughs> knife from the adventure and he's got the the rebreather from Thunderball. But then she dies, and then Sean Connery comes back in Diamonds Are Forever, and the first thing that I'm they sure have him doing back. is going after Blofeld to avenge her death. And then you get to show Roger Blofeld. Moore visits her grave. The world's in the movie. not enough. They have they, they reference... when they go into the subway tunnel. There's all the old equipment, oh, equipment. and he even asks Q if his jetpack still works. Yeah, you know, and right. and it, Timothy Dalton is asked why he's never been married, and Felix Slater says, "Well, he was married once before, but she died." Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Roger oh, Moore visits okay. visits the grave. And finally gets revenge for Tracy's death. There's the little things. And it go, to in make gold, it full circle, it yeah. goes back to what you're saying that the Marvel movies should do. Is there's little hints that things are together, right. but not necessarily go all full which is blown. Why, which is why in 20 years, I guarantee you, Tony Stark will still be in the Marvel movies. It'll just be oh a different God, actor. Oh my God, there's going to be, yeah, by the time we get to like where we're old men, there's going to have been five or six actors that have played Tony Stark. Right. And, well, and, no, because Marvel, the but superhero we live movies in a, are gone, according to Steven. But Stevens. we live but, in a world now where that's it's more acceptable to do things like that. And we also, the, the problem with things like uh, the 007 is a code name is we also live in a time where everybody wants to come up with these fan theories of how to tie things together. Right. And that's and that that's fine when it's a fan theory and you have a little bit of fun but it also starts to become it, it starts to grade on the issue when it becomes like when they ask eon is it a code name what, what, where does casino royale fit in and they have to go no casino royale is a reboot here is his parent here here is essentially the dead body of his parents yeah and there is his grave and they even you know and, and just like and the fact that they even you know the the broccolis have said like you know no no you know you know it, they it's not a code name Please stop asking. Right. Please stop. And here is Sam Mendes, a biggest Bond fan on the planet, getting to direct his dream movies by doing Skyfall. And going, it's like, I want to put his parents' graves in the movie. Is that okay? I want to see, you know, you know, you know, the Bond family plot. Well, they were talking about because Q and M were supposed to be like code names too. Well, M has and always been where, a code name. That's where they kind of yes, started. And... But, but M has always been a code name because even in the movies, even in the, the original first series of movies, the M's changed, but they were different characters. I think it was the, 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 the one of the admirals from The Spy Who Loved Me 
becomes M in a later movie. Right. But he also has a clearly defined name and a clearly defined separate character. You know, when Judy yeah, Dench yeah. took over. Yeah, Ray, Judy Dench is an M, M. and F. And, and uh, even, they, Ray. even Ray Fiennes. Yeah, Ray Fiennes is, is an M, right? And with, yeah, and with Judy Dench being, you know, playing, you know, M twice. But they also wrote But wasn't Money M's Penny? different as well. Money Penny is, is her name. Right. Right, she's Miss Money Penny is her name. Yeah. And, and she's played by different char- she's played by different actors but it's always the same character except for now now that they've completely changed they've made a different money penny for the new mm-hmm. bond series well now right. money penny will be a black actress when they decide to replace uh Naomi Harris is her name I think so and she did a great job playing M especially when they did like the money penny diaries and right. they've done other books like she played a really kick ass money penny and that's the thing is like you just don't go back to making money penny white and it's one of those things where it's like, no, they, they, there's a specific image that comes with these characters, and two characters can change. Q, because Q just stands for Quartermaster, mm-hmm. and they did that before with his replacement in the previous series. Right. When Q, one Q retired and a new Q took over. and one and Yeah, they even M's, made a joke out of it. Yes, and M. Well, I think because the actor different. was getting sick right, yeah, he was right getting before he was, he was he right, retired. Before he passed away, yeah. So, so that's the thing is, but Money Penny is a character that sounds like no, you're going to cast black actresses because be because there was a, there was a joke. I mean, not a joke, but there, there was kind of where, where the, before I even heard the Bond fan theory that you know was a code name. Money Penny was the first one, other than M and Q, obviously. The M- Money Penny was the first one that was a code name for you know the person that's you know, in charge of the right. finances. But no, it's the, no, that was the joke in Casino Royale too. It's like, oh, it's a kind of money penny joke, but no. So let's just, f- this segue, Ethan, you're going to love this. So speaking of characters changing to, from one person or gender to another, Marvel at New York Comic Con has been announcing a, a lot of changes for some of their characters. So we're going to throw it over to Chris for the, all the New York Comic Con, but. Did I, I say th- changes? Yeah. I didn't say changes. I didn't like that segue at all. You didn't? No. No. Segway. Because, you know, we, we do have X-23 taking over the role of... Wolverine. Wolverine. But that's yeah, not, they're not... They're not changing Logan. They're changing that's true. who Wolverine but, is. But well, the Wolverine. <laughs> Wolverine is now a code name. They didn't, they didn't change Steve Wolverine's Rogers. Wolverine's always been a code name. <laughs> they didn't change Steve Rogers. You know, they didn't turn him into Bucky Barnes. They just replaced they just turned, him. They just made him old. Yeah, they just made him old. Okay, it was a bad segue, but I just had to get over to New York Comic Con because we're running long. All right. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things to New York Comic Con... Um, Marvel, Marvel had a lot of th- a lot of people talking about diversity and all the stuff, and it is something that Marvel is doing. Uh, Axel Alonso pointed out that <clears throat> you know their, their line has never been more diverse than it is right now. Their characters uh, kind of all across the spectrum, and something that he kind of hopes isn't much of a conversation anymore. That's just a status quo. Uh, they had, I guess, somebody came up and actually asked about you know well, you got too many of these characters that are gay and too many of these characters that are now women. Why are we caring too? But. To me, do we really need to care that much about their sexuality anymore? Well, that's what that's what he's talking right. about. Is it's, it's, I mean, sexuality is always going to be an issue, especially if it's an issue of something where you have a character if you established as such. It, because yeah. look, the, if you the, sacrifice story for it, I think that's when, when it you, throws people yeah. off. Yes. When you have when you have the 1960s version of Bobby Drake be gay, but the 2010 version of Bobby Drake is not gay, right? That's where you're sort of like, eh, that's that's where that's what fuels the rumors of agendizing because that is an odd choice to make a character who is supposedly from the 1960s, uh, a character that we've been following for God knows how many years. It's not the 1960s now. But the original X Men team brought into the future. I was like, well, I'm gay. I'm like, well, okay, because you've never been gay. And not <laughs> even that he said he was gay. He was told he was gay by Jean Grey. Yeah, Jean Grey is like invading. And his is Jean Grey mind screwing him? No, no, Jean it, Grey it just, be, uh, the the because he doesn't like girls now. Bendis's whole thing with Jean Grey is that she kind of can't keep her her mind out of everybody's head, so it becomes an issue in which she's sort of invading everybody's privacy. But, but he's also, but Bendis also said he would further address Iceman being gay with something, and he sort of you know alluded. Well, they announced that that Iceman's sexuality actually is a part of the main story in the book that he's in, which is extraordinary X-Men, I believe. Right. Um, so it is something that they, I guess it's something they plan to address going forward. Um, a couple other things. April sees a uh, spider women crossover event of all the women of the spider universe meeting spider Gwen in her universe. Right. Which means there's and still a multiverse after there's still a multiverse. That's actually revealed Secret Wars. very quickly yeah. in, in the number ones that came out last week. Um, there is still a multiverse. Uh, they said they, this, this was we've been covering this from start. That Robbie Rodriguez and and Jason Latour were talking about 
that they were right not away. going to do Spider Gwen if it was supposed to be in or six one six or whatever. Right. And, and that was, was that was the first thing they sort of said. It's like, yeah. no, Gwen when she gets her own book will be She's kind of having her own separate. thing. But we're already having well, that's all the, of the that other was Spider the Silk of... and Spider Woman and Jumping the Universe. Yeah, to go we'll meet. go see her. Uh, there's a new Star Wars book uh, next year. No, end of this year. Yeah, yeah. next year. Uh, Obi Wan and Anakin yes. by Charles Soule and Mark Chichetto. It takes place in Anakin's right. early teens, and it's them. The way that the the setup of the book is, it they're going to kind of do it in flashback adventures. So they'll be talking to each other and they're like, "Remember when we were at such and such?" So that they have that opening to kind of go back and forth. So they're going to take a page after Family Guy, I guess. Remember so. when? But it's well, it's the, the same things happen with the Canaan book. Yeah, uh, the Canaan book starts with him uh, right after Order sixty six, and then it jumps to uh, Rebels. Rebels in an adventure that takes place at a, in the right. current time, uh, and then goes back from there. Um, Dark Horse announces... Uh, Dark Horse has some big announcements. That, well, <laughs> are they? Uh, one of the things they announced, the Avatar Legends of Korra series. Um, so they're actually doing a, a licensed Legend of Korra series. Is, is that going to bridge the gap between the new movies, I think? Or did they say? This is not the Avatar you're talking about. This is oh, you know, you're talking about, yes. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Legend Avatar. Legends of Korra is the um, series based on How to Train Your Dragon, uh, which was announced by the, the directors of the two films cool. that have already seen. So that's kind of cool. I hadn't heard that one. Yet. And then the big thing, yes, James Cameron announced a partnership with Dark Horse to produce comics based on his Avatar property, um, covering events anywhere in the timeline between the three films, four films, eight films that he wants to do. And that'll start pretty much right away because his sequel is his sequels due next year. That's what he said. That's what he wants. Yeah, but I I, when I, I read that time, I was like, do it. "Wow, I don't, I don't know," because everyone was heard of it. And it's kind of that odd thing. I'm looking at this, and and I think when I was kind of doing the research online, more people are excited about the idea that there will be more Legends of Korra product than there would be right. anything of Avatar. That's what it looks but, like. But Does Avatar: The care? Last Airbender was a huge series, yeah. so I'm sure there's. And I, I, I like I myself like I liked uh, liked Korra, and I liked the regular Airbender stuff. So it's like, oh, good. There's more stuff because. The dark, has, the dark Horse Digest that they did a few years ago, really good. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, good, there's more stuff out there. And I, I'm always sort of in the wheelhouse, like, good, more kids' comics, because there's never enough. And that's not sarcasm. They really, I think, do need to be more. So How to Train Your Dragon coming out is actually really cool. I didn't know that one was coming out. But it's really yeah. weird, though, because who usually does Nickelodeon properties? Dark Horse. They, is they, it Dark they've, Horse? Had, they've had the Avatar The Last Airbender stuff. That uh, IDW. Yeah. IDW, too, because they do Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles. Yeah. And they and they do Jim. Well, Jim's not a. And they've done so Jim's uh, Hasbro. Yeah. Well, they have all Hasbro's properties too. Yeah. But that's right. Ninja Turtles. Yeah. They, and IDW also has Cartoon Network as well. Yes. Mm. Um. Also announced at uh, New York Comic Con, they did a uh, the Daredevil panel was today for uh, season two. They showed. A, whoa. They showed a teaser trailer that uh, featured uh, Elektra and Punisher in it. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I that was yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Uh, Ethan, they had the big Walking Dead premiere last. Mm-hmm. Was it last night Friday, or Friday, Friday night? night? I think yeah. Friday night, um, which was actually off site of New York Comic Con, but they've they've been doing stuff like Is that. that. The Remember garden. the museum they did? They sold out Madison Square Garden to yeah. show the premiere of Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Which is tonight. Mm-hmm. So I guess we're going to be doing our Walking Dead cast tonight after the show. Yeah, because that worked out so well for Fear the Walking Dead. Well, it was because ah. Ethan wanted to wait around on you, and then you were behind, and I was like, well, Ethan, let's just do it ourselves. We'll just do it, the two of us, and then when Chris wants to jump on, then he can jump on. My favorite part is that that first week when you said, this will be weekly, and I'm just looking at you shaking my head going, no, no, do not promise <laughs> it being weekly. But that's the that's not going to happen, because that's the first thing I got the next week was uh, <laughs> Eric sending me a message like, so did you not watch Walking Dead? Where's my weekly review? I, you know, I got a couple <laughs> messages over Facebook about that, too. Um, but it was like, well, the second one wasn't really that good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, you, if you want to do that, if you're going to be up here, we'll do that every week. Um, anything, anybody else getting any news or anything? Travis, you've been quieter than usual today. Yep. <laughs> well, not as usual because he's never on the podcast anymore. I don't know. So. Oh, that's true. He's a little more quiet. <laughs> yeah, Travis, bum, bum. yeah, Travis and I talked, I sort of like got our beefs with Battlefront out of the way. And, yeah. and it's just that was sort of, that's sort of like the big like apart from like comics that's also like that was big nerd news like everyone's kind of like Battle Friday oh uh, but that's uh, the way you, that's the way it's been with a lot of games and stuff you know that's what the, well of course well, that's just anything there's, in the nerd world there, Every, yes. everything that comes out there's like, a good saying you know you know under promise over deliver yeah. yes there's a lot of 
there's a lot of companies that could do well with doing that. Because when you promise, when, when DICE says we're doing Star Wars game, I freak the geek out. And they're like, yeah, we're going to do this and that. And the other, and I'm like, oh, whatever. Yeah, but on the Star Wars front, do you think that that's happening right now with Episode Seven? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, but the, the question is, like, it's a movie, and that's a... Uh, but do you think the payoff is going to be as well as the expectation for the payoff? No, That's it never why I've is. Been keeping myself out of the it, it, it never is, and I try not Travis, to. Travis, you're going to hate it. You movies. hate everything, so it'll be okay. I we try, have so many people on this show that hate everything. I you try not to, that? but it's also I try not to overhype my. And even with Battlefield, like it's like with Battlefront, like I don't pre-order games because you're a sucker. Oh God! If there's one piece of advice we can give anybody who listens to this, just never ever pre-order ever again. But how am I supposed to get the special only available no, downloadable no, super just character of just character? Just don't do this. it. Just don't do it because you can unlock it in the game yourself. If yeah. If it's that good of a game, it will either be unlocked later or you can like purchase it as an add-on with a whole bunch of extra stuff. Yes. Look, I so pre-order certain stuff. games. And I, I will continue to pre-order certain oh, games. You're the devil. Oh, You're the devil. You're an idiot. You're why games come out bad, because you give them money so they don't have to finish what they start. I will, I will play the other side of that. You, pre-ordering games helps no one. Certain See, times. I used to pre-order games when we worked in the video game games store. Pre-ordering games only allows them to fuck you harder, <laughs> take your money earlier, and not do anything on the back end. Once they've made their $10 million in pre-orders, that's the signal to stop working no, 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 on the I, game. I, 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 let me put this through correctly. I will never pay full price as a pre-order for a game. You'll pay more. But you do! You usually yeah, pay more. You'll, you'll, you you'll, pay, you'll pay double. Well, game. There's been, the, you'll pay there, double there's been games that. recently that you're like... Yeah, I paid it off. I'm ready to pick it up. Quink. <laughs> okay, so... Why does that look different? I don't oh, know. Oh, because it's a new recording? No, okay. no it's, it's the same new... recording. I was going to say, please don't erase the... Yeah. No. Um, look, okay. I mean, we do have... I, I, I hope we have fans that... Uh, you know, <laughs> we have fans. Fan. <laughs> or we have people that listen. Well, we had the only fan that was supposed to show up and <laughs> record this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> And had a quote unquote emergency. Hey, this I, well, is, I don't know if it was an emergency, but he had to go to Temecula. This Temecula. is this is a huge coup because Travis is actually here, so I you can't ask for two things. <laughs> you, can only, you can only get we one. We have a guest here. It's Travis. Yeah, yeah, I'm the special. Guest. That's actually what I said. Remember <laughs> when Rich said we have a special guest on Sunday, and I was thinking, is it Travis? It's hey, so I'm going to ask this on the air just to see if you uh, will answer it. Uh, what, what's your availability going to be like coming up? Are you going to be more available? Possibly. No. It depends on what day you want to record. That's that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll save that for off the air, but uh, let's wrap things up. Um, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but do anybody else got anything me. that they saw or heard from New York Comic Con? No, nah, it's always yeah. tough. And that's like just you know, like, oh, cool statues. No, the and no, the toy, the, the and, toy episodes are the best exact, ones. Yeah. So, there was some cool toy. The, the Hans, it. see, Chris, they they showed the black figure for uh, the three and three quarter for Han, Han Solo. Yeah, Chris thinks that that's fake. Is that worked. actually in the Hasbro booth? I just kept yeah, seeing no, that was. online. Someone, okay, I didn't know. I, I saw pictures around. online. I, I it, saw it the pictures right. from the booth the too. And isn't that? It's not the three and three quarter. Isn't it's three and three quarter. Yeah. So the Walmart exclusive or Walgreens or whatever it <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, whatever. Well, I think what they're all exclusive to Walmart now. The black figures. No, no, no. The the because this is the problem. Everyone keeps saying the black series. There's two black series. There's the six inch, which is mm-hmm. everywhere, and, and there's three, three and three quarter, quarter, which is now exclusive to Walgreens. Right. Walgreens. Walmart. 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 Whatever. It's a good thing I didn't go to Walgreens. Wall something. <laughs> One of those walls. Um, but no, it looked really good, and they showed like the uh, the snow trooper and a couple others. Yeah. It also says on the back of the Han Solo cart that he dies. <laughs> it comes with a it comes with a, uh, another chest that you can put on. It has a bullet wound in it. Or Chewie, why? <laughs> or the broken leg. It comes with crutch, crutches. Chewie is the upper. Chewie's the upper? Che- no, Chewie just upper. snaps and kills Han Solo Chewie's the in the new movie. Emperor. Chewie, that, Chewie's the new what emperor. If, what, if, the new what if it's not Han dying? What if it is Chewie dying? That's the that would be the first time. Bum, no, bum, I know, but it, no, but that'd be the that would be the weirdest. Like everyone's like, that's, oh, someone is gonna die. Out. Someone from the original cast is gonna die. It's like, what if it? What no, if, Lando shows up just to die. Lando shows up to kill ah, Chewie. Here. Well, they're oh. saying it's Han and Chewie. I think it's maybe it's just Chewie. The Millennium Falcon just blows up with them in it. That could be. What if it's just Chewie? 
Chewie just died. You realize at this point, more people would mourn the loss of the Millennium Falcon, Falcon than they would the characters. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, screw Han and Chewie. I can't believe you blew up the fucking Millennium Falcon. That's my favorite. No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just is kill a new one right now. If, you, if you're going to kill off Chewie and Han, would you rather it be in the Falcon or... Because I don't want to see anyone else pilot the Falcon if it's not them. Um, but you saw uh, did. you saw Lando I, no, pilot yeah. the Falcon, but it was with, with that hell weird, in the first in the first film. Yeah, Leia's pretty much in the in the, co- the co-pilot seat, screaming about they're all around us. And Chewie's just like, shut up, woman! I'm trying to drive. And, and you got to. Uh, and that's the only point in which the guns actually have to have somebody in it. Guy with a bad mustache, <laughs> pilot too with with Lando. Ten numb frog lizard? No, it's nine numb. Nine, 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 nine numb. Ten numb's a member of Blade Squadron. Okay. Nine numb. Yep. All right. All right, so let's just wrap things up. We're going to kill it here. Um, so make sure you check us out at Facebook slash Nerdables. We're also at Nerdable Show on Twitter. And check out our, our kind of their website, <laughs> Nerdables.com. Way to sell it. No, I know, right? Checking that. that Han Solo is a six inch. Is it a six inch? Mm-hmm. I could swear they said it was three and three quarter. So for Chris, Ethan, Sebastian, and telecommuting in, Travis, I'm saying, all right, we'll talk to you in 107.